Hello and welcome to this video for Module 9 of the Netbox Zero to Hero training course. If you haven't already checked out the earlier modules yet, then you can find the link to them in the notes below to get started. For this video, I'm using a Docker instance of Netbox running locally on my laptop. If you'd like to follow along with the demo, then you can easily do that. There are a couple of links down below to help you spin up your own instance of Netbox, along with a link to the course that accompanies this video. In this video, Eric will add the facility power panels and feeds for the new Brisbane branch office, but then also add the PDUs and the power cable connections, so all the devices in the new communications rack can be powered on. So the first thing to do is to add the two power panels. So under the power section, click the plus icon next to power panels, select the Brisbane region, the branch site group, and the site AUBRI01. The location is the comms room, and give this one the name of AUBRI01 Power Pan 1. Then click Create and add another. And this one is the second power panel. So the name ends in dash two, and then click Create. Next, create the primary and secondary power feeds that will come off the power panels. So I click on the plus next to power feeds, select the region and the site, and then the power panel. In this case, it's panel one. Moving down to the power feed section, Select the rack and then add the name of feed one. Now this feed will be the primary feed. So moving down to the characteristics, the supply is AC, 200 volts, 16 amp, three phase. I'll leave the maximum utilization at 80% so that we're not at risk of attempting to draw too much power from it. Then click create and add another. You'll notice that most of the fields are now pre-populated. So there are only a couple of things to change here. Firstly, this is being supplied by Power Panel 2 and is named Feed 2. And this one is going to be the redundant feed. So select that from the drop down. The electrical characteristics are the same, so just click Create. Excellent. So that's the panels and the feeds set up. And the next things to add are the power distribution units or PDUs that will be supplied by the feeds. So, first of all, create the device role for the PDUs. Click the plus next to device roles, and then add PDU and go with red for the color. Uncheck VM role and click create. In Netbox, PDUs are modeled as normal devices. So as you did for the other devices so far, start by adding the manufacturer. So it's devices, manufacturers, click the plus, and then PDU is made by APC. So add that and click create. Next, the device type that Eric has chosen is the AP7921B model. So you can add this by importing from the device type library. So from the GitHub repo, copy the YAML definition, and then in the UI, click on the blue import icon next to device types, and then paste in the YAML and click submit. So if you take a look at the device type, you can see that it has one power port that will connect to the power feed and eight power outlets that the devices in the rack will connect to. Next, create two devices from this device type by clicking the blue import icon next to devices and then paste in the CSV data to define the two PDUs, PDU1 and 2. Note that the CSV data also includes the rack mounting information with the first PDU located at rack unit 11 and the second at unit 12 facing the rear of the rack. So after clicking on submit, Check the rack elevation now by clicking on the link to the rack and there are the two new PDUs at the rear of the rack. And you can now also see the two power feeds listed underneath. Next add the power connections from the power feeds to the PDUs by clicking on power feeds and selecting the first feed and then click connect on the right hand side. You can see that the A side is pre-populated with the power panel and power feed. So on the B side, select the region, the site group, the site, a location and the rack. And for the device, select the first PDU and its power port. Remember, this is not a power outlet for devices as this is connected to the upstream power feed. The type is power, the tenant group is TLE departments and the tenant is consulting. And click create. Then do the same for the second feed. And this time the B side is going to be the second PDU. And again, it's power port one. Type is power and the same tenancy information and click create. So now if you click on the power feeds, you see both the connections to the PDUs. Fantastic. Now it's time to add the power connections for the network devices and servers. 
And once again, do this using the CSV data from the file in the Git repo that accompanies this module. Click on connections and then the blue import icon and paste in the CSV data for the power cables. These are connecting the power ports of the devices to the power outlets of the PDUs. And note that as there is a redundant power supply, where a device has dual PSUs, these connections are split across both PDUs. Then click Submit. And that is all of the cables required to connect up the power. And if you click on Power Connections, they're all listed there. OK, so the last thing to do is to update the allocated draw values for each of the power ports on the devices in the rack so that we can track the utilization correctly. So go to Devices, Power Ports, and then for the PS1 power port for the console server, select it and click Edit, and then set the allocated draw to 20, and then click Apply. Then for the router, set the allocated draw to 100. Then select both of the switch power ports and edit them and set them to 700 watts. And lastly, select all four PSUs for the servers and set the allocated draw to 900 watts. Great, so now that's done, check the power utilization is being tracked correctly. Under Organization, Racks, and then select the Brisbane Rack. And here you can see the utilization of the available power for the rack is standing at 57%. So that's looking pretty good. So I hope that's been a useful overview of how Netbox models facility power as discrete power panels and feeds, and also how to add PDUs to supply power to individual devices. If you have any questions as you go through the course, then pop on over to the Netbox Zero to Hero channel on the NetDev Slack. If you aren't already a member, then you can sign up for free using the link below. So once again, thanks very much for watching.